Hello, welcome to A Word in Season. My name is Mim Hosking. I'd love to share with you a parable that Jesus told his disciples. It's found in Matthew chapter 13, verse 33, but it's also in Luke chapter 13 as well. Uh, it's interesting when it comes to parables, you know, we can come back to them time and time again and have layer and layer of deeper understanding. This parable fits into a section with a whole bunch of other stories that Jesus told to help his disciples understand what God's kingdom is like. We've been unpacking these with our kids in Kids Church this term, and it's really interesting to see the insights that they had. So I'll share those in just a moment. Let's read from Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Jesus told another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast that a woman puts and she used in making bread. Even though she put only a little bit of yeast into three measures or three cups of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. There are five parts to this story that we unpacked with the kids. Firstly, it's Jesus telling the story. It's a parable to help the people in his audience understand God's kingdom. We'd had stories of God's kingdom being like a treasure that is something to um, be greatly valued, like a precious pearl. That God's kingdom is like a seed that is planted, depending on the soil, uh, depends on how it will grow can also be like a mustard seed that starts off super small and grows into a large tree in which a variety of birds find their home and a place of rest. One of the kids said tranquility. You know, it's that place of belonging and acceptance in God's family when you have Jesus as your king. So this story is of the yeast that goes into the dough. Yeast is a type of leaven uh, like egg whites or baking powder that when it's added to flour and given the right conditions, gives air, releases carbon dioxide to, to produce this gas and air that gives rise uh, and enables the dough to grow. So the yeast is super tiny and small, mixed with warm water and in the right conditions, mixed in with the flour, it actually changes things. So it mixes together and the change is incredible. You can see in the picture that I've added in here that something that is small becomes larger. It is enabled to grow. The leaven is what changed the dough. And in the end, the lady was able to bake some bread rolls, not flat bread, but fluffy, light, um, bread rolls that were perhaps a little bit bigger than she'd originally uh, would have been able to do without the leaven. So I wonder what that tells us about God and about his plans for us. We asked the children if the woman knew that the yeast was going to change the bread. Maybe she did. Maybe it was an experiment. and She was waiting with anticipation to see what would happen. But maybe she knew and that was her intention. We also asked the kids, I wonder what the bread could really be. They're pretty switched on kids and they said, well, perhaps it's us, that we are the ones that grow and change. And when we asked them, I wonder what the yeast could really be, they were able to share their insights that the yeast is like following Jesus, having him as our king, the Holy Spirit, changes us and grows us to be more like Jesus. I reflected on my own life with the kids that when I first started following Jesus, I told a few friends at school about Jesus and invited them to youth group. And, and I actually started helping out with the Sunday school and, and teaching even as a teenager in the pre-primary or kindergarten class. And, and over time, I grew. I understood more of what it meant to be a follower of Jesus and I allowed the Holy Spirit to grow and change me and my sphere of influence grew. I've been able to teach many children about Jesus as a children's pastor, but also working in tr Christian childcare centers and Christian schools. And it is so wonderful to bump into people later on that I've been able to journey with a little bit in their time and, and people that become parents themselves following Jesus and teaching their kids. Some have become pastors and missionaries and foster parents. It's just wonderful to see 
the little bit of influence that I had, perhaps like the little bit of yeast, for God's kingdom. When the Holy Spirit takes hold of somebody's life, when they choose to follow Jesus and accept his love and forgiveness, they grow and change. And uh, then they can also influence others as well. It's an incredible image of the little bit of yeast that permeates the dough, just as God impacts our lives. So I have a prayer that I would love to read for you. Um, as I actually change my role at Mounties and uh, have an increased influence in other churches, I hope and pray that God will continue to give me wisdom and strength and capacity to do this role well. But it's also about the influence that we each have. So my prayer is that God will enable each of us to embrace his kingdom, living with Jesus as king, trusting him for salvation and eternity, but also for living now following him and allowing his spirit like the yeast to impact our lives so that we will each have increased capacity, increased voice, increased influence in the places that God puts us. As the kids reflected, once the yeast has been mixed with the dough, it's there forever. It cannot be separated. We cannot be separated from God's love. We are with him forever. And so I pray that you will be encouraged to keep following Jesus, permeating society and transforming lives as our church mission states, but that it will actually be significant and that you'll be able to look back and, and see those that you've helped to get to know Jesus more and to see how they have been growing and being transformed by the power of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by our loving Heavenly Father at work in people's lives.